Another example, everyone, our favorite. Okay, so this one, we're gonna have another piston cylinder assembly. It's gonna undergo two processes. Processes will be A and B. And it's gonna go between the same end states one and two, where the pressure at state one is one bar, volume is one cubic meter, the internal energy at one is 400 kilojoules, and then at state two, we've got a pressure of 10 bar, volume of 0.1 cubic meter, and then internal energy of 450 kilojoules. Now, process A, we are told, is a constant volume process from state one to a pressure of 10 bar, followed by a constant pressure process to state two. Process B is going to be a process from states one to two, during which the product of pressure and volume is constant. Now we're gonna ignore kinetic and potential effects here. And for each process, A and B, we want to draw that process on the PV coordinates. We wanna evaluate work, have units of kilojoules for that. And we wanna evaluate heat transfer with units of kilojoules. All right, so that's what we are gonna do. Now, we don't really have too many keywords here other than we got constant volume here, and then we've got constant pressure here. All right, and then we've got this relationship. And don't forget that these two things are ignored. All right, so let's get started on A. So we'll draw out the processes on the PV coordinates. So let's do that up here. So here's V, units, cubic meters, and pressure is always going to go on this vertical axis. So units for that will be bar. Now, initially at state one, we are at a volume of what? If we look up here, we're at a volume of one cubic meter. All right, so let's put one right here. So we're at one, our pressure is one. So there is state one right there. All right, so now we've got that. Now, if we read about process A, let's do this one first. This says it's a constant volume process from state one to a pressure of 10 bar followed by a constant pressure process to state two. So what that means, since it's constant volume, that means we're just gonna have a straight line going up. All right, to a pressure of 10 bar. So here's 10, so right here. Constant volume, we just go straight up like that. Now we're at 10 bar, and then after that, we're followed by a constant pressure process to state two. Now we know that at state two, our volume is 0.1. So let's put 0 0.1 here. And since we're at constant pressure, our pressure is going to stay at 10. So now, this isn't going to be straight here, but we're just going to draw a horizontal line this way. Okay. So this together here is going to be process A. Right? I'm not exactly sure what that's supposed to look like, but anyways, it's meaning this and this together give you process A. All right. And this little node here, you might want to call it little a just to give it some sort of variable name. Okay, so that's process A. Now let's do the same thing for process B. So for process B, we have the PV equals constant relationship. Okay, so we have our values of pressure and volume for both states. We've already got these drawn here. So essentially, we just need to connect these two lines. And I'm just going to draw something that looks like that. And this relationship is determined by this PV equals constant relationship. All right. So that's what it'll look like on the PV coordinates for each of the processes. All right. Now next, let's go ahead and we want to evaluate work and heat transfer for both of the processes. Now remember, if it's asking you for work and heat transfer, that should automatically tell you energy balance. That's the equation we want. We want that energy balance equation. 
So let's write that out. And the reason we want that one is because it has both work and heat transfer. So we got delta U plus delta KE plus delta PE, and then that's going to equal Q minus W. So that's the standard equation. Is there anything we can cancel out? Look and see what we underlined. We can cancel this and this. Those go away. Told us to ignore those, so that's good. Now we're just left with delta U equals Q minus W. Okay, now U values were given. We have U1 and we have U2. So we can find this delta U term by just doing 450, and that's kilojoules, minus 400 kilojoules. And then that's got to equal Q minus W. Okay, so we've simplified our equation. Now we have this one equation, though, with two unknowns. So we still can't solve yet. We need something else. Now look and see what kind of problem we've got here. We've got a piston cylinder assembly. We've got some volume changes going on. So that should indicate to you to use that work equation we started out with a few videos ago. So we can find work from the relationship that work is the integral of pressure times dV, where V is volume. So we're going to use this equation to get work for each of the processes, and then using that, we'll plug that into this equation up here, then we can find Q. Let's start with process A. So for process A, if we look at this diagram right here, we're going from one to this little A point. Now remember, this is a constant volume process. Do we have work for a constant volume process? No, right? Because remember, if we plugged in the two volumes here, they would be the same in our limits. So then when you plug in the limits, they subtract each other, cancel each other out. So there is no work for this portion of process A. So we'll say the work of one to A is zero because V is constant. So that's a little shortcut there. And now we go from A over to two. Now this one does have a volume change. So there will be work associated with that process. So for this one, the pressure is 10, because it's a constant pressure. So we'll have 10 dV, and now we need our limits. We're starting at one, going to point one. So those will be your limits. Now, when we integrate, the pressure is in bar, so we got 10 bar times the volume, and put in our limits here. So this is one cubic meter to 0.1 cubic meters. Then all we need to do is plug these in and check the units. Remember, we want work to be in kilojoules. So now we're going to have 10 bar times 0.1 cubic meters minus 1 cubic meter. Now we've got bar and then cubic meters. So these are not the units we need. We want kilojoules. So let's switch this out. Let's get rid of bar first. To get rid of that, we're going to do 10 to the fifth Newton per square meter per bar. And then that gets rid of this. Now we're going to be left with Newton meters because the meters squared here cancels out two of these. So that just leaves you with Newton meters. And our conversion from Newton meter to kilojoules, it's going to be one kilojoule per 10 to the three Newton meters. So now all of these units go away except for kilojoules, which is exactly what we wanted. Now, multiplying all your numbers out and everything, you get negative 900 kilojoules. There we go. Okay. So now we've got that. And again, pay attention to your sign. We've got a negative. So what does that tell us about work? 
works being done on the system. So there's some sort of external energy that's being transferred in to make that process happen, right? to make that compression happen. Now, that's process A. Let's do the same thing for B. We're going to go to that same equation. So work's going to be the integral of pressure times dV. Now remember, in this case, we know that the product of pressure times volume is equal to a constant C. So with this, we know P1 V1 has to equal P2 V2. And that has to equal the constant C, whatever C is. So let's go ahead and let C equal P1 V1. So now, if we do that, we can go ahead and get our equation for pressure. So we know that pressure from this has got to equal C over volume. So now if C is P1 V1, then our pressure here is going to be P1 V1 over V. And you can plug your values in here. Pressure P1 is 1. That volume is 1. Put that over V, so you get 1 over V. So 1 over V is going to be what you plug in for your integral. And again, since these are constants, you could have just left it as C until after you integrated. That's what I did in one of the other examples, but this time I just did it beforehand. So it's up to you how you want to do it. It's going to give you the same thing. Whatever you think is easier. All right, so now for the work for process B, we're going to go from a volume of 1 to 0.1. And the pressure is going to be 1 over V. And then we have our dV. Now you just need to integrate. So this is just basically the integral of dV over V, which is the natural log of V. Super easy integral. We're going to evaluate it 1 and 0.1. Remember, these are cubic meters. And now we plug everything in. And once you do all that, we're going to get one bar. That's from our pressure. And actually, it's bar meter cubed. That's from this right here. So this, mm, let's see, let's put this down here. So that's one bar meter cubed per volume. All right, so that's where this is coming from. It's just from this numerator right here. So we've got that times the natural log, 0.1 over 1. We need to convert those units. So we're going to do 10 to the fifth Newton per square meter. Put that over bar. And then finally, we want to convert to kilojoules. So we're going to have one kilojoule per 10 to the third Newton meter. And this got all crowded here. I apologize. So now we've got that. OK, now look at your units. Bar goes away. That's good. We wanted to get rid of that. Newtons, those are gone. We've got this right here, meters cubed divided by meters squared, that gives you meter, but meter is down here in this denominator, so those are all gone. So it's perfect, we're left with just kilojoules, that's exactly what we wanted. So now when you multiply and divide everything, you're going to get negative 230.3 kilojoules. So this is the work for process B. This will be our second result. Again, look at your sign, it's negative, so work is done on the system. External energy supply. It's making that happen. Now let's go to C. We're going to evaluate heat transfer. This one is super easy. You're going to go back to that energy balance equation that we have. You're going to plug in work, solve for Q. And this right here is the equation I am talking about. So the 450 minus 400 equals Q minus W. So let's write that out. So all we need to do is plug everything in. So process A, 
we're going to have 50 kilojoules. That's going to equal Q minus negative 900. Keep that negative in there. So Q here for A is going to be negative 850 kilojoules. Okay. And then for process B, do the same thing. Just plug in your numbers. We have 50. It's going to equal Q minus that negative 230.3 kilojoules. And QB then is negative 180.3 kilojoules. Pay attention to your sign. So we've got negative here. So the energy we've got, if it's a negative Q, that means we've got energy from heat transferring out of our system. Okay, so we've got energy coming in from the work terms. We've got energy transferring out from the heat. Okay, so basically we're losing heat from our system. It's going out to the surroundings. At the same time, we've got work or energy transferring in from outside of our system. Okay, so those two things together help us with our energy balance and make this system work the way it's described. Okay, so awesome stuff there. I really like those problems. So now we'll continue on. So I will see you guys in the next video. You guys have a great day.